Welcome to Boom Shot, the show where we take a look at film, photography, and the business behind the scenes. I'm your host, Garrett Ray, and this week we're taking a look at the essentials of everyone's favorite piece of film equipment, the slate. No matter how big or small the set is, there's no moment that's more fun than when a guy gets up there with the slate and slaps those sticks together. But this is more than just a fun intro to a blooper reel. This is a fantastic tool that can solve a ton of issues in post-production before they even start, as long as you're diligent with it on set. So how do you use it right? We're going to go through each individual part of the slate and show you how it's used and how it's helpful. At the top, you have the name of your production. It's important to write this so that you can know from the very beginning of a clip which project it's for, even if your organizational skills fail you and it ends up on some random hard drive. That's happened to me before, and it's really nice to be able to just look at the beginning of the clip and know where it's actually supposed to go. This next row has the main information for your shot that you're going to need in the edit bay. The first thing you're going to see is roll. Now, in the old days of shooting on film, roll was actually used to designate which roll of film a shot came from. But nowadays, we use this to denote which SD card or SSD drive our shot was on and which camera it was on when we shot that. This is important for whoever's doing the organization and the dailies for your footage. Next is scene. What's important to remember here is that you're going to have a number and a letter. The number tells you which scene you're shooting. So scene one is the first scene in the script, scene two, second scene in the script, and so on. Then the letters tell you which angle you're currently filming in that scene. So if you have three angles you're shooting for scene three, you're going to have scene 3A, 3B, and 3C. Finally, you've got your take. Each take is an attempt to get the shot right. Your script supervisor uses this to make useful notes depending on which take you're doing. So let's say you shoot scene 4C five times, but scene 3 has the best performance. Your script supervisor can make a note of that and you can easily grab that shot later on without having to dig through every take over and over again. This next section tells you who the director and the camera operator or the director of photography are. This is there mostly for vanity reasons, but if your name is there, it's pretty cool. So. At the bottom of the slate, you've got a place where you can put your filming dates and any filters you're currently using when you're shooting that shot. You've also got a bunch of strange, strange hieroglyphs. These are meant for you to circle so that you can tell if something was shot in day or night or if it was an interior or an exterior shot. This may seem a little bit redundant because you can kind of tell by just looking at the frame, but it never hurts to have rock solid information for your people in the edit bay. Way over to the right of the slate, you have the letters M-O-S. This stands for mit out sound, and it's used to denote a shot that has no sound in it at all. There are some shots that are either so close or so far away that getting sound is either not practical or not actually useful. And it's important that you make a note of that on set. That way your editors aren't freaking out wondering why there's no audio for a certain shot. In the filter section, you should put whatever filters you have on your lens. This can be neutral density filters or NDs, polarizers, gradiated filters, whatever you have on the front, you need to make sure is on the slate. The sync lettering is there for you to circle if you're wanting to show that you're using multiple cameras and you're going to use the clap of the slate to sync all of those together in a multi-clip. All of this information is there so that if you have the need to reshoot something, you can do it easily. With all of this on the slate, you can go through, look at the shot, and then match all of those camera settings perfectly without having to do a bunch of guesswork or dig through metadata on the computer. Now that we know what everything is for, let's run this through a couple of examples. Partially for educational purposes, and partially because I love slates with all of my being, and they're super fun. Here we're shooting a scene from our made-up film called The Artiste. This is scene 7 from our script, and this is the fifth angle in our scene, so that makes this scene 7E. This is also our ninth try to get this right, because Katie keeps laughing at a squirrel across the road, so that makes this take 9. At the bottom you can see we're shooting a day, it's an exterior shot, we've got an ND6 applied to our lens, and we're shooting in the far-flung future date of 3099. Also, some guy with an idiotic name has taken credit for all the work. This is the RT, scene 7E, take 9. Stop! Before you go any further, you need to make sure that the camera and the audio are both rolling. This is to make sure that the clap gets recorded on both systems so that you can sync this up in audio. In order to make sure that everyone understands what's going on, you need to call out camera rolling and wait for them to reply with rolling. Then sound speed, and they will reply sound speed. 
Small note here, the reason people call sound speed instead of sound rolling sometimes is because in the old days, when they were using mechanical machines for recording sound, it would take a second from when they pressed the button to activate it for those machines to start rolling at the correct speed. It's kind of just stuck around, and it's fun to say, so. After you've confirmed that everyone is rolling, call out the scene and take numbers, and then slap those sticks together. Gently. You don't want to break it. Okay. Camera rolling. Rolling. Sound speed. Speed. This is the RT, scene 7E, take 9. Mark. After that, get out of the shot as quick Back. as possible. Just make sure not to move until after the slap has actually happened. And cut. When you're shooting your scene MOS or without sound, you shouldn't let the clapper actually clap. Put your hand between the sticks on the slate and then just hold it in front of the camera for a few seconds. Then pull it out of the way and let the shot happen. Action! This is a very easy way to communicate that there's no corresponding audio for a shot. And you should do this whether or not you've circled the MOS indicator on the slate itself. Having this type of information available to editors in the edit bay at a glance without having to dig through metadata is invaluable. And plus, on top of that, I've noticed a higher level of professionalism when I'm using one on set. So it's kind of like a secret weapon to get people to pay attention. If you're dealing with people who don't actually work in the film industry and don't have a passion for it, they're just kind of trying to help out, it's also a fun thing for them to mess around with. The Slate is a staple of filmmaking because it's a great tool. It's important that you learn how to use one and then implement it on your own films because it's definitely something you'll be running into if you stay in this industry. You can expect to pay more than $30 for a decent one though. The one we used for this episode cost me $12 and it was junk. It fell apart while we were shooting and I had to hold it together with my hand behind the slate while we were filming. So don't get a super cheap one. Know that you're going to get what you pay for with these and it's important that you check all the reviews and then don't trust them and just pay a little bit more just to be safe. It's reality what we live in. Thanks for joining us here on Boomshot. We'll see you next week. Hold on just a second before you go, though. Something I need to tell you about is the tail slate. If you forget to slate at the beginning of a shot, you can always come in at the end and slate. It's just as easy to sync that way as it is when you slate at the beginning. So, all you have to do is come in after all the action is done and do this. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. If you like what we're doing, make sure you subscribe, give us a like down below so we can keep doing this. Uh, here on this channel, you can find Boomshot, excerpts from our podcast, Roll Sound, which is on iTunes and SoundCloud, and uh, short films, music videos, fun stuff. What are you doing? Hit the like button. There you go.